George Washington was the first President of the United States, the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War and one of the Founding Fathers of the United States. He presided over the convention that drafted the current United States Constitution and during his lifetime was called the Father of his Country. Widely admired for his strong leadership qualities, Washington was unanimously elected president in the first two national elections. He oversaw the creation of a strong, well-financed national government that maintained neutrality in the French Revolutionary Wars, suppressed the Whiskey Rebellion, and won acceptance among Americans of all types. Washington's incumbency established many precedents, still in use today, such as the cabinet system, the inaugural address, and the title Mr. President. His retirement from office after two terms established a tradition that lasted until 1940, when Franklin Delano Roosevelt won an unprecedented third term. Born into the provincial gentry of colonial Virginia, his family were wealthy planters who owned tobacco plantations and slaves which he inherited. He owned hundreds of slaves throughout his lifetime, but his views on slavery evolved. In his youth he became a senior British officer in the colonial militia during the first stages of the French and Indian War. In 1775 the Second Continental Congress commissioned Washington as Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army in the American Revolution. In that command, Washington forced the British out of Boston in 1776 but was defeated and nearly captured later that year when he lost New York City. After crossing the Delaware River in the middle of winter, he defeated the British in two battles, retook New Jersey and restored momentum to the Patriot cause. His strategy enabled Continental forces to capture two major British armies at Saratoga in 1777 and Yorktown in 1781. Historians Lord Washington for the selection and supervision of his generals, preservation and command of the army, coordination with the Congress, with state governors and the militia, and attention to supplies, logistics, and training. In battle, however, Washington was repeatedly outmaneuvered by British generals with larger armies. After victory had been finalized in 1783, Washington resigned as commander-in-chief rather than seize power, proving his opposition to dictatorship and his commitment to American republicanism. Washington presided over the Constitutional Convention in 1787, which devised a new form of federal government for the United States. Following unanimous election as president in 1789, he worked to unify rival factions in the fledgling nation. He supported Alexander Hamilton's programs to satisfy all debts, federal and state, established a permanent seat of government, implemented an effective tax system, and created a national bank. In avoiding war with Great Britain, he guaranteed a decade of peace and profitable trade by securing the Jay Treaty in 1795, despite intense opposition from the Jeffersonians. Although he remained non-partisan, never joining the Federalist Party, he largely supported its policies. Washington's farewell address was an influential primer on Republican virtue, warning against partisanship, sectionalism, and involvement in foreign wars. He retired from the presidency in 1797, returning to his home in plantation at Mount Vernon. While in power, his use of national authority pursued many ends, especially the preservation of liberty, reduction of regional tensions and promotion of a spirit of American nationalism. Upon his death, Washington was eulogized as first in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen by Henry Lee, revered in life and in death. Scholarly and public polling consistently ranks him among the top three presidents in American history. He has been depicted and remembered in monuments currency, and other dedications to the present day, early life.
the first child of Augustan Washington and his second wife, Mary Ball Washington. George Washington was born on their Pope's Creek estate near present-day Colonial Beach in Westmoreland County, Virginia. According to the Julian calendar and annunciation style of enumerating years, Washington was born on February 11, 1731, the Gregorian calendar. Adopted later within the British Empire in 1752, renders a birth date of February 22, 1732. Washington was of primarily English gentry descent, especially from Sulgrave, England. His great-grandfather, John Washington, emigrated to Virginia in 1656 and began accumulating land and slaves as did his son Lawrence and his grandson, George's father, Augustan. Augustan was a tobacco planter who also tried his hand in iron mining ventures. In George's youth, the Washingtons were moderately prosperous members of the Virginia gentry, of middling rank, rather than one of the leading planter families. At this time, Virginia and other southern colonies had become a slave society in which slaveholders formed the ruling class and the economy was based upon slave labor. Six of George's siblings reached maturity, including two older half-brothers, Lawrence and Augustan, from his father's first marriage to Jane Butler Washington, and four full siblings, Samuel, Elizabeth, John Augustin and Charles. Three siblings died before adulthood. His full sister Mildred died when she was about one, his half-brother Butler died in infancy, and his half-sister Jane died aged of twelve, when George was about two. His father died of a sudden illness in April 1743 when George was eleven years old, and his half-brother Lawrence became a surrogate father and role model. William Fairfax, Lawrence's father-in-law and cousin of Virginia's largest landowner, Thomas, Lord Fairfax, was also a formative influence. Washington spent much of his boyhood at Ferry Farm in Stafford County near Friedrichsburg. Lawrence Washington inherited another family property from his father, a plantation on the Potomac River at Little Hunting Creek, which he named Mount Vernon, in honor of his commanding officer, Admiral Edward Vernon. George inherited Ferry Farm upon his father's death and eventually acquired Mount Vernon after Lawrence's death. The death of his father prevented Washington from an education at England's Appleby School, as his older brothers had received. He achieved the equivalent of an elementary school education from a variety of tutors, as well as from school run by an Anglican clergyman in or near Fredericksburg. Talk of securing an appointment in the Royal Navy for him when he was 15 was dropped when his widowed mother objected. Thanks to Lawrence's connection to the powerful Fairfax family, at age 17 in 1749, Washington was appointed official surveyor for Culpeper County, a well-paid position which enabled him to purchase land in the Shenandoah Valley, the first of his many land acquisitions in western Virginia. Thanks also to Lawrence's involvement in the Ohio Company, a land investment company funded by Virginia investors, and Lawrence's position as commander of the Virginia militia, Washington came to the notice of the new lieutenant governor of Virginia, Robert Dinwoodie. Washington was hard to miss. At exactly six feet, he towered over most of his contemporaries. In 1751 Washington traveled to Barbayards with Lawrence, who was suffering from tuberculosis, with the hope that the climate would be beneficial to Lawrence's health. Washington contracted smallpox during the trip, which left his face slightly scarred, but immunized him against future exposures to the dreaded disease. However, Lawrence's health failed to improve, and he returned to Mount Vernon, where he would die in the summer of 1752. Lawrence's position as Adjutant General of Virginia was divided into four district officers after his death. Washington was appointed by Governor Dinwoodie as one of the four district adjutants in February 1753, with the rank of Major in the Virginia Militia. 
During this period, Washington became a Freemason while in Fredericksburg, although his involvement was minimal. French and Indian War The Ohio Company was an important vehicle through which British investors planned to expand into the Ohio Valley, opening new settlements and trading posts for the Indian trade. In 1753 the French themselves began expanding their military control into the Ohio country, a territory already claimed by the British colonies of Virginia and Pennsylvania. These competing claims led to a war in the colonies called the French and Indian War, and contributed to the start of the Global Seven Years' War. By chance, Washington became involved in its beginning. Robert Dinwiddie, Lieutenant Governor of Colonial Virginia, was ordered by the British government to guard the British territorial claims including the Ohio River Basin. In late 1753 Dinwiddie ordered Washington to deliver a letter asking the French to vacate the Ohio Valley. He was eager to prove himself as the new Adjutant General of the Militia, appointed by the Lieutenant Governor himself only a year before. During his trip Washington met with Tanner Charas and another Iroquois chiefs allied with England at Logstown to secure their support in case of a military conflict with the French. Indeed Washington and Tanner Charasin became friends. He delivered the letter to the local French commander Jacques Lagarde de Saint-Pierre, who politely refused to leave. Washington kept a diary during his expedition which was printed by William Hunter on Dinwoody's order and which made Washington's name recognizable. In Virginia, this increased notoriety helped him to obtain a commission to raise a company of 100 men and start his military career. Dinwoody sent Washington back to the Ohio country to safeguard an Ohio company's construction of a fort at present-day Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. However, before he reached the area, a French force drove out colonial traders and began construction of Fort Duquesne. A small detachment of French troops led by Joseph Coulon de Jumonville was discovered by Tanner Charasson and a few warriors east of present-day Uniontown, Pennsylvania. On May 28, 1754, Washington and some of his militia unit, aided by their Mingo allies, ambushed the French in what has come to be called the Battle of Jumonville Glen. Exactly what happened during and after the battle is a matter of contention, but several primary accounts agree that the battle lasted about 15 minutes, that Jumonville was killed, and that most of his party were either killed or taken prisoner. Whether Jumonville died at the hands of Tanner Charasson in cold blood or was somehow shot by an onlooker with a musket as he sat with Washington or by another means, is not completely clear. He was given the epithet Town Destroyer by Tanner Charasson. The French responded by attacking and capturing Washington at Fort Necessity in July 1754. However, he was allowed to return with his troops to Virginia. Historian Joseph Ellis concludes that the episode demonstrated Washington's bravery, initiative, inexperience and impetuosity. Both France and Great Britain were ready to fight for control of the region and both sent troops to North America in 1755. War was formally declared in 1756. Braddock disaster 1755 Indiana 1755 Washington became the senior American aide to British General Edward Braddock on the ill-fated Braddock expedition. This was the largest British expedition to the colonies and was intended to expel the French from the Ohio country. The first objective was the capture of Fort Duquesne. Washington initially sought an appointment as a major from Braddock, but upon advice that no rank above captain could be given except by London, he agreed to serve as a staff volunteer. During the passage of the expedition, Washington fell ill with severe headaches and fever. Nevertheless, when the pace of the troops continued to slow, Washington recommended to Braddock that the army be split into two divisions, a primary and more lightly, but adequately equipped, flying column, offensive which could move at a more rapid pace, to be followed by a more heavily armed reinforcing division. 
Braddock accepted the recommendation and took command of the Lee Division. In the Battle of the Monongahela the French and their Indian allies ambushed Braddock's reduced forces and the general was mortally wounded. After suffering devastating casualties, the British panicked and retreated in disarray. However, Washington rode back and forth across the battlefield, rallying the remnants of the British and Virginian forces into an organized retreat. In the process, despite his lingering illness, he demonstrated much bravery and stamina. He had two horses shot from underneath him, while his coat was pierced with four bullets. In his report, Washington chiefly blamed the disaster on the conduct of the Redcoats while praising that of the Virginia contingent. Whatever responsibility rested on him for the defeat as a result of his recommendation to Braddock, Washington was not included by the succeeding commander, Carl Thomas Dunbar, in planning subsequent force movements. Commander of Virginia Regiment L.T. Governor Dinwoodie rewarded Washington in 1755 with a commission as Colonel of the Virginia Regiment and Commander-in-Chief of all forces now raised in the defense of His Majesty's colony and gave him the task of defending Virginia's frontier. The Virginia Regiment was the first full-time American military unit in the colonies. Washington was ordered to act defensively or offensively, as he thought best. While Washington happily accepted the commission, the coveted red coat of a British officer as well as the accompanying pay continued to elude him. Dinwoodie as well pressed in vain for the British military to incorporate the Virginia Regiment into its ranks. In command of a thousand soldiers, Washington was a disciplinarian who emphasized training. He led his men in brutal campaigns against the Indians in the West. In ten months his regiment fought twenty battles, and lost a third of its men. Washington's strenuous efforts meant that Virginia's frontier population suffered less than that of other colonies. Ellis concludes, it was his only unqualified success in the war. In 1758 Washington participated in the Forbes expedition to capture Fort Duquesne. He was embarrassed by a friendly fire episode in which his unit and another British unit thought the other was the French enemy and opened fire, with 14 dead and 26 wounded in the mishap. Washington was not involved in any other major fighting on the expedition, and the British scored a major strategic victory, gaining control of the Ohio Valley when the French abandoned the fort. Following the expedition, he retired from his Virginia Regiment Commission in December 1758. Washington did not return to military life until the outbreak of the Revolution in 1775. Lessons learnt Although Washington never gained the commission in the British Army he yearned for, in these years the young man gained valuable military, political, and leadership skills. He closely observed British military tactics gaining a keen insight into their strengths and weaknesses that proved invaluable during the Revolution. Washington learned to organize, train, drill, and discipline his companies and regiments. From his observations, readings and conversations with professional officers, he learned the basics of battlefield tactics, as well as a good understanding of problems of organization and logistics. He gained an understanding of overall strategy, especially in locating strategic geographical points. He demonstrated his toughness and courage in the most difficult situations, including disasters and retreats. He developed a command presence, given his size, strength, stamina, and bravery in battle. He appeared to soldiers to be a natural leader and they followed him without question. However Washington's fortitude in his early years was sometimes manifested in less constructive ways. Biographer John R. Alden contends Washington offered fulsome and insincere flattery to British generals in vain attempts to win great favor and on occasion showed youthful arrogance, as well as jealousy and ingratitude in the midst of impatience. 
Historian Ron Chernov is of the opinion that his frustrations in dealing with government officials during this conflict led him to advocate the advantages of a strong national government and a vigorous executive agency that could get results. Other historians tend to ascribe Washington's position on government to his later American Revolutionary War service. He developed a very negative idea of the value of militia, who seemed too unreliable, too undisciplined, and too short-term compared to regulars. On the other hand, his experience was limited to command of at most 1,000 men, and came only in remote frontier conditions that were far removed from the urban situations he faced during the revolution at Boston, New York, Trenton and Philadelphia.